How challenging has it been being the mayor through the era of coronavirus? Uh, actually, that's that's been a tough one. And what's been the main thing is we want my number one priority is in job is uh, public safety and trying to do the right things to make sure people are safe the best we can control it and and uh, you know we listen to the health officials and and uh, the governor's office we we uh, talk with them and, and everybody tries to stay on the same page but I think Franklin as a whole the citizens have done a good job of trying to protect each other uh, my main focus you know a lot of these downtown businesses that we have are are uh, shops that people do it because they love it they got their own shop they make a living at it but they don't get super rich off of some of the small mom and pop shops and uh, our biggest fear was that we would lose some of those shops through the coronavirus and we have not and we did apply for a grant through okra uh, that's a uh, office of community and rural affairs through the state we got a grant and we were able to help 39 of these small businesses downtown with uh, some grants to help pay some utilities and and that sort of stuff that's fantastic yeah, so that that really that really helped out and, and uh, we got a very caring community we try to everybody tries to help each other and we got a lot of a lot of good people in the city yeah I, I can feel it I can see it and maybe those Small town shop owners aren't getting wealthy, but there's a big bonus that goes with it. They get to do business and live in Franklin, Indiana, and that seems like a very good thing from, from my eyes. Uh, we had a group called Franklin Heritage about 15 years ago. They, I think 10 or 15 years ago, they bought, uh, they bought the art craft and bought it, brought it back to life, and that's what started bringing people downtown, and, and uh, those those uh, historic uh, theaters like that is a big asset to your city. If you're not taking advantage of that, I would encourage other cities to do that. It's amazing that one thing like that, the restoration of a historic theater, creates the spark that, that gets this downtown district going, that, that brings them in. I, I just think that's a neat story. Yeah, and, and growing up, I grew up here in Franklin. and uh, So you're a hometowner. I'm a hometown boy, and I've seen Franklin when, uh, when it was booming back in the back in the late 60s early 70s and then uh, through maybe the 80s and then I seen uh, when we started having the 31 corridor I'm talking about the big box stores uh, I seen the downtown area kind of dry up and then that's when we uh, about, about 10 12 years ago we how are we going to recreate ourselves so there was a group of uh, People got together and figured out how do we bring some of these buildings back and use some grant money and and entice people to get back downtown. So we kind of recreated ourselves, is the way I see it. Yeah, that, that's that's an awesome small town story. Listen, thanks for your time today, Mayor Barnett. I, I'm very grateful. I know I just kind of crashed in on you here, but thanks for. Uh, uh, you know, sketching out a little time for me today. You have a beautiful city. I'm super impressed. Can't wait to go see it. All right. Thank you. Well, hold on a minute. You, you raced for 42 years? Yeah. Uh, are you talking dirt late models? Yeah, I was a dirt late model racer for 42 I, years. I, I somehow recognize the name because I actually used, I announced, I was the announcer at Eldora Speedway in 1996. Okay. And this, your name rings a bell in the dirt late model world. I, I guess it would racing for four decades. Well, actually, in, in 1997, when Jim, Jimmy Mars won the Dream 100, yes, I was the guy that runs second in the Dream 100. Really? Yeah. And I think, That's impressive. Yeah. I, I know I recognize your name now. Yeah. That is cool. Uh, had C.J. Rayburn cars and lived three miles from him. Uh, he was a big part of my career, and in 2018, I was inducted into the National Dirt Track Hall of Fame in Forest, Kentucky. Tony Stewart was a sponsor of mine for 18 years, and so has, Grayson... Does, has Tony Stewart ever visited Franklin, Indiana? Uh, quite often, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's so yeah, cool. Tony, only, Tony lives about uh, 20 minutes from here. Yeah. Farther south. You ever been to his house? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to take me with you? I want an interview with Tony Stewart. Tony's a great guy, and Tony's another one of those Indiana guys that has a giving heart that people may not see like we see it. Oh, I, I've, I've seen it a lot over the decades. 
Are you have you officially hung up your goggles? Are you officially retired or I have when I okay. became mayor was the and I was looking to retire anyway, just didn't yeah. know how to really go about that. Um, that's a good way to do it. I'll yeah. become mayor and that'll well, gobble up all my time. I, I've had a lot of people <laughs> say, uh, what does being the mayor and racing have in common? And you gotta wear a helmet for both jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Is this awesome or what? An old theater restored right off the town square here in Franklin. Just beautiful. I, I love the old one human ticket booth. Yeah. That is so cool. How can I help you? How are you, sir? Hello. Well, I'm the history mystery man. Oh. And uh, I, uh, I do small town video documentaries and I'm doing one on Franklin. Is there any chance I can peek at the theater? Yeah, let me call my coworker over here real quick. Ken Costi lets know that you're coming through. Oh, okay, that helps. Thank you. So we show on 35 millimeter here, um, which you know oh, a lot of- Oh, you call those film cans? Yeah, I mean, they're the canisters. And so this is actually how you get the film from the studios. There's reels. Oh, there. you wow. And, and you said last week you showed Abbott and Costello meet the mummy? Yep. Did you say thir you're showing 35 millimeter film? So we're actually film. watching a reel to reel yes. film? Oh, Absolutely. that is so cool. I get to hear the tick, 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 tick. <laughs> that is awesome. So, yeah, not a lot of theaters are doing that anymore. Oh, um, I think it's so cool. It's... Yeah, we really like to support it. So, thank you. I'm loving it already. So, this theater was built in 1922 as a silent movie and vaudeville house. That, that, that's so neat that the theater reaches back to the silent film era. Yeah, and I'll show you some of the stuff in a second, but you know, we had, we do have an orchestra pit. So we're owned by a historic preservation nonprofit called Franklin Heritage. And so we restore homes in town, we operate the theater, and we have a salvage shop. Oh, look at that old door. Yeah, there's a fun story about that. Oh, wow. So, you can look up in there. Oh, wow. We're on a reel-to-reel -reel system, so we got two projectors. Um, this is like 1922. Yeah. Is what it is. Yeah. The big reel-to-reel. -reel. That is really neat that you're showing 35 millimeter film. Yeah. That's I love that. that. We want it to be shown the way it was meant to be seen, so it's well, really important for us to show on 35. What's the deal on that awesome door? All right, so if you look here, you can see here there's a little cable. You can see how thick this is. I noticed that. So this was built um, you know, in the 1920s, and the kind of film that they were showing on back then was, um, what was it, like a silver nitrate film. So that kind of film could, given the right conditions, spontaneously combust. It was really flammable, really touchy stuff. And so the way that these booths were designed were, if the film went up in there, this was a safety device where this would kind of burn through, it would shutter the doors, it would shutter all of the flaps for the projectors. So you'd lose the projection booth, but it'd give everyone else enough time to get out. But the so place wouldn't like blow up. A fire door. That's a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's that's an interesting over. story. And, and this, oh, wow, I love it. This <laughs> is our auditorium. Normally it seats around 600, 625 at absolute max. So, so the renovation here is still underway. Yes. So, like right now we're doing the seats. Um, we're restoring a lot of stuff. I'll show you more stuff in the lobby. It looked like some of the seats were original. Yeah, uh, these seats, the ones in the back I think date from the 30s and 40s. These ones I think are 60s and 70s vintage. I gotcha. We've got them restored. Put you backstage real quick. So we're up on the stage. Yeah, and so. Look at this old wood floor. Yeah. That's really interesting. That's something that we need to get refurbed and finished. Yeah, you want to keep that, high. don't you? But yeah, and then you can also see up top, we've got an old wooden grid up there that we're hanging, you know, the, uh, um, all the curtains and everything from. We used to have the screen hanging off of there, but we brought the screen down and now mounted it on feet so we can move it easier. 
And one of the fun things that we do here is we kind of keep some old traditions alive. So this has been used for many years. At the theater? Yeah. And so we do prize drawings before our evening performances or even screenings. And we'll give prizes to the audience, usually they're themed to the movie. And that's kind of a fun thing. That's we also neat. give the long distance award, whoever in the audience has come from the farthest. And well, so I get the award today. I'm from Toledo, <laughs> Ohio. Oh, Toledo. So. <laughs> from Cleveland, so I'm also a all right. Buckeye. Oh, Cleveland? Yeah. Yeah, like so you can see we've had people come from all over the world. Gosh, um, no kidding. Think about that. Look at Africa. I have questions about the ones China. from Siberia, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Siberia. <laughs> but I've been here when we've had folks from Korea. No one from the United States, though, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> the other side. Is the okay, United States. <laughs> the other side. So, some uh, nights it's let's see people coming from Bloomington. Or... Not, no one yet from Toledo. No. I got to get a pin on there for the yeah. mystery mystery, man. Heck, yeah. I'm going in. Toledo. Ohio. I am on the map <laughs> at the Art Craft Theater. Yeah. They used to... We're heading to the basement. Um, yeah. So there used to be dressing rooms and things down here. God. Can you imagine being at this theater in 1922 for a vaudeville show? Oh, how cool know. that would have been? Yeah. Uh, this is how you get up in an orchestra pit. Orchestra pit that, that you guys filled in, right? Yeah, but then we dug it. Well, they filled it in in the 1950s when they went to a full-time movie theater. But you can get up in there now. We had it dug out, okay. say, five, six years ago. But now we have this modern HVAC system. You ever been down in this basement at night? No. No? <laughs> Is that because you're just not coming down here at night? or? You just, There's no real reason to be down here at night, and then also like, well, the stairs are super rickety. <laughs> well, yeah. Do I need to ask about ghosts? Or? There, we did have a ghost hunter team come through once. Did their ghost ometer go crazy? Well, they uh, heard some like moaning sounds, but I think it was like our old projectionist was actually up top kind of messing with that. Maybe he had... So, oh, this is neat. Showtime. Yeah. I'd, lo I'd love to see a show here. In normal circumstances, now with the current thing going on, when we have like our Christmas shows, we'll have every seat full. Um, when we do Hocus Pocus, Wizard of Oz, those are ones that we kind of show every year. We'll pack the house. Yeah, that sounds like a family night. Yeah, we show what we call classic films. And for us, a classic film is anything that's 10 years or older. But in practice, you know, we're showing a lot of stuff from the 30s and 40s, um, 60s and 70s, 80s, everything like that. Um, family movies do really well here. Comedies do really well. Um, How, it must be so challenging in the era of coronavirus because the idea is to, you know, pack them in and you yeah. can't pack them in. The one thing that is actually, I mean, it's tough in the theater business right now for everybody. But what we have that the other first run theaters don't have is our audience is coming to see older stuff. They, you know, that's precisely why they're coming here. And with the new theaters, they have issues where there's not new movies coming out. They're pushing everything back. There's no new premieres. So you'll never have that problem. For us, we don't have that issue where people are coming to see kind of their old comfortable favorites and they can do that here. We can't fill the capacity. Um, obviously, we're trying to keep everyone safe, keep everyone socially distanced, but at least um, we're able to show some stuff and our crowds and our audiences are wanting to see kind of like old comfortable favorites. Well, uh, and when you show a 35 millimeter classic from the 30s, 40s, whatever it is, um, I, it's not in any way digitally remastered. It's still black and oh, white. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's no digital retouching. There's no um, remastering or anything like that. So they're not no colorized? No, no, we don't show anything colorized. Awesome. I mean, I love, there's, I mean, I can look at a black and white photo from 1887, and that photo tells me so many stories oh, yeah. and speaks. So the, 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 the name, Artcraft, does that reach back to 1922, or is that? Yeah, that's the original name. I don't that know is the original name? I don't know why it's called that, to be honest. But yeah, that is the original. I don't want to say it's odd, but for, for a theater, I mean, I think of something like the Rivoli or the Tivoli or the yeah, or like Tivoli the strand, or the like <laughs> but the Artcraft. But that's the original name, yes. and that's why we need to keep it. And so you can see here a lot of the restoration we've done in the past years here in the lobby. It's beautiful. I'll draw these attention to these, what we call the bean sprout designs. And these were actually hand painted by a local artist named Raymond Turner, going off of the original blueprints that we had for these. So, so like in the 80s and 90s, this was all covered by wallpaper. <laughs> this was all covered up. And so when we were stripping things down, this oh is my the original God. painting. 
So we got it framed, and this is what was underneath the wallpaper. So we took little scrapes of the paint. We did an analysis of the colors so we could match them. And then Raymond Turner painted these, again, by hand, but using the original blueprints kind of drew stencil. That's so cool. The original fits perfectly with the new and, quite frankly, looks just the same. Yeah, we wanted to get it as close as possible. Yeah, I think your local artist nailed it. And then we have... You can see here, this is something just in the past couple months that's been done. Stripping the wallpaper, repainting the stairwell. So this is what we call the art craft cottage. This is actually a house, formerly a private residence, that is attached now to the theater through that corridor, but it wasn't originally. Oh. This was somebody's home. And so this actually, if you look at the theater in this house, it makes a little L. There's a thing called the Willard, which is a former hotel, but is now like- I know, saw that. Beautiful building. Yeah, beautiful building. Right there, huh? The yeah, the Willard. And restaurant. Yeah, I saw that on the way over. And then, so this was a house that was just here. They actually sold instruments for a while in this front room. So I wonder if the house predates the theater. That's a great question. I don't actually know the dates. I'll bet it does. But we use this. We rent this out for parties, but if we're having any sort of special guests or if we're doing... Is that an original door to the home? No, I so mean... it's like, there's just actually a store behind us. So, Franklin Heritage is all about historic preservation. And so, I can this tell. door is actually three separate pieces where our executive director, Rob Schiltz, this came off of one of the banks in town when they were um, you know, upgrading the fixtures and handles and everything like that. And they were just getting rid of these old, nice brass fixtures. So I was like, hey, can I have this? And I'm like, sure. This door came off of a old um, gas station garage that had just been, you know, again, they were doing a refurbishment. They just dumped it in the uh, pile outside out the front. He's like, can I have the door? I'm like, sure. And then we have a salvage shop and the director of our architectural salvage shop, this portion came off of his grandmother's barn, I believe. So they put all three of those together, kind of recycled them, and now we've got this nice and sliding door. And it just looks perfect there. Yeah, and they're it's, all it's perfect. pieces that came off of various stuff in the town. Why I, does one move from Cleveland, Ohio, big city America, to small town I was Franklin? in San Francisco before this. Holy <laughs> mackerel. Or, um, why, why'd you, how'd you end up in Franklin? Growing up in the Midwest, um, I kind of wanted to move back to the Midwest because it's a little bit more affordable and sustainable and also be like closer to family and things like that. So my sure. family's still in Ohio, so it's like, it's still a drive, but it's not too far. My wife also, she's got family in Kentucky, so it was a nice kind of middle point. Um, so do you live here in Franklin? I live in Greenwood, which is... Oh, okay, Florida, nearby. Florida. Franklin is a beautiful town, isn't beautiful it? Beautiful town. Oh my God, I was so impressed. That's why I'm here. I just drove through the other day. Yeah. And I looked at it and I went, oh my God, I, I gotta come back. Yeah, it's, it's... It's so clean and so well-preserved and so nice. We, not to pat ourselves on the back too Well, much, you should, but you deserve to. We feel like the art craft has helped that. Um, there's the, so Franklin is the county seat. So we got the Johnson County Courthouse. So you got a lot of city governmental stuff here too. Yeah. But the art craft theater, since it's gotten revitalized and since it's been getting more and more people, um, more and more people have been coming to downtown Franklin. We've been having more and more festivals and having more kind of stuff. But there's a lot of activity, especially in the summer when you come down in the good months, um, when you got some of these festivals. You'll have the streets packed, we'll have some shows here at the art craft, people will be coming down. And you want to know something? That's exactly what the mayor, I had a conversation with the mayor uh -huh. earlier today, that's exactly what he said, the art craft <laughs> spawned the renovation and, and help ignite the spark that uh, got people excited about coming down and, and and rejuvenating the downtown district. Our executive director likes to say that the art craft is like the anchor store for downtown, is kind of how he views it. I think that's pretty accurate. And yeah, it's something, can we take pregnant, because everyone here, a couple of our folks who work here do live in Franklin, everyone else lives pretty close by. This, everything about this place is fascinating, the 35 millimeter film, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the way the projection is and uh, the way it used to be and still is and uh, the stage set up, it's, it's, it's all still here. I feel like I'm getting ready for the vaudeville performance tonight. Oh yeah. It's so cool. And it, like, being, on, being here when, a night when it's like packed, when it's fully going, you get a lot of people here. We have a lot of regulars who come who, you might have seen the movie like 20 times and they want to see it again, but you get that audience participation, the audience. 
Well, it's great that you're preserving it and, and it's everything about this place. I mean, the old tile floor, the little candy, hot dog, pop counter, popcorn. It's just yes. If you see so something, sweet. something else we do, you can see our concession price is, you know, the biggest thing you're getting is a jumbo popcorn for less than $6. Your jumbo soda is three fifty. Yeah, you get smalls for two. You go to the big time movie theater in the big city, and a yeah. and a Nestle's Crunch Bar is twenty nine ninety five. Yeah. Well, <laughs> except for like, we've got different kinds of shows, but our usual show, our regular series shows, your ticket's six dollars for an adult, five dollars for seniors, military, college students, four dollars for kids. That's uh -huh. a bargain. That's yeah. that's small town America. So, Listen, thank you so much for your time sure. today. I really appreciate. It. I enjoyed. You want popcorn or anything on the way out? Oh, uh, well, can we, if we're going to do popcorn, then you got to play the 35 millimeter Abbott and Costello movie. Then. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stay all afternoon. Day, so. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much. No, I'm good. Thank you so much. I just yeah. ate. So. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. So I'm sure the locals know all about this one, but us out of towners certainly don't. This story I find absolutely fascinating a lady by the name of Nancy Curlin Barnett she died here on the property uh, just beside me in 1831 and she was buried here literally right there <laughs> right in the middle of the road this is why they call it the grave in the middle of the road uh, it was around 1900 just past 1900 when county officials decided to build a road through here and but not over his dead body anyway literally there we this is a road over a dead body uh, grandson of nancy stood vigil at this grave with a shotgun to make sure her remains were undisturbed so they built the road over her and around her right in the middle of the road is that fascinating or what there was an archaeological exploration done here to come someone now i'm hoping not to be uh laying next to nancy Carlin in the grave i think we can get through this one um there was an exploration done by an archa archaeological team in 2016 and the remains of six other people were discovered as well but here lies the grave in the middle of the road of nancy Carlin barnett just outside of franklin indiana oh lord Franklin, Indiana is also the home of Franklin College, founded in 1834, home of the Grizzlies. Beautiful campus. If you have the opportunity, check this place out, a liberal arts and science school jam-packed with history and some really interesting stories, one of which would be the Franklin Wonder Five high school basketball team who won three state championship titles, 1920, 21, and 22, before they followed their coach, Ernest Grizz Wagner, over to Franklin College, where they won two state collegiate titles, 23 and 1924. And of course, they played in this historic recreation hall building behind me, and it's got some age on it, but the reason they're going to preserve it and keep it is because it holds so much history, specifically the Franklin Wonder Five. How cool is that? Hey, how do you like going to Franklin College? I'm doing a little documentary. Um, I like it. Um, I went to a small 1A high school, so I like the smaller campus and getting like extra help. Um, there's plenty of places where uh, like tutoring and help sounds a big thing to me. And I was also lucky enough to have an opportunity to play baseball here as well. So that was also very nice. Oh, uh, cool. I think Franklin was a pretty good pick for me. It's a pretty little campus, isn't it? it? Is. I do enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, okay. What do you What do you study in here at Franklin College? Um, I'm doing the three two um, applied mathematics and engineering through IPUI. So I'll graduate with a 
degree in applied mathematics and mechanical engineering. Oh my God, that's fantastic. That's, yeah. that's one you can go out and earn a living with. Yeah, definitely. Good for you. Yeah, you must definitely. be super smart too. <laughs> no, that's great. Good for you. Thank Thanks you. for thank chatting you. with me. Yeah, thank you. So if you haven't figured it out by now, Franklin, Indiana was named after that guy, Ben Franklin, hence Franklin College. And by the way, Franklin College, if you happen to see this video, I want to let you know that if you're looking for a teacher, and I'm talking the best this side of the Mississippi River, you're looking at them. I taught journalism, media writing, public presentation, speech, communication courses at the University of Toledo coming away with absolutely off the charts, spectacular reviews. Kids were literally lining up to get in my class. I'd like to stay in the area if you're interested. Look up the History Mystery Man. For the History Mystery Man, I'm Don Radeball. I look forward to seeing you in the next small town America. Say goodnight, Ben. Come on, Ben. <laughs>